us. Everybody happy? Look at your neighbor and ask them, are you happy? Everybody smile. I hope you're learning something. My wife asked me, she said, why do you always stop and say, are you learning anything? I said, because I don't want to waste my breath. And I appreciate so much. I'm a little overtaken by your love and show of love. Someone asked me if I worked for missions agency or UPC or whatever. When I resigned my church, I stepped out on faith. I get no salary from anywhere, anybody. I just go where God tells me, and that's how I support myself. I don't have a job. And people said, well, how do you survive? I don't really know, but it's amazing how good God's been. And I've never, ever struggled. Um, my wife asked me, she said, how are you going on this trip? And I told her I was going by faith. And so she said, okay, I trust you. And I, I felt bad. Pastor said, we're going to take an offering. I said, no, no, I don't, I don't expect, don't want, don't expect, whatever. He said, don't stop our blessing. And it, it humbles me, but it also confirms that the Lord has told me that I, if I will step out by faith and go, that he will send me. And I believe that. Um, and it, it confirms the word, a true apostolic house. Sister Sandra is going to be bringing a series back from America called Dominion Living. I just finished this. It's six CDs that deals with the mind and the mouth and money and morals. And um, it, it helps you understand that if you do not have victory in your money, you don't have victory. And if you don't have victory in your mouth, you don't have victory. I can understand, I can talk to, the Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. I can talk to you and tell whether you have victory or not by what you confess and by what you say about yourself and about others. First Corinthians chapter 12. Now, what I'm going to, you can turn your paper over. I'm going to be dealing now with the intercessors. I don't have notes on this. The last session will have notes. That's the fill in the blank. This session is going to be more personal. I'll be dealing more with the personality profile say personality profile of an intercessor now let's go back and review we are all called to intercede but we are not all intercessors how many of you are here though and you feel after hearing me preach that you are an intercessor that you have a call of God to intercede that you have travailed you know what the burden of the Lord is you understand the concern of the Lord you feel the heaviness you feel the emotions you feel that and you are an intercessor it is your ministry primarily prayer is your ministry you don't just pray because you're supposed to pray but you pray because you love to pray prayer is your life life and that's that's part of an intercessor raise your hand if i'm talking to you raise them high i want to see wonderful i think they all sit over here no, no they're out in it prayer is your life and it's a wonderful thing and and a church cannot survive and as i read to you earlier the foundation of the old and new testament church is based on intercessory prayer chapter 12 1 corinthians and verse 1 then verse 11 now concerning spiritual gifts brethren I would not have you ignorant. The word ignorant there means unlearned, okay? Not stupid. It means unlearned. So if he does not want us unlearned, it means he wants us what? Learned. So that means it is possible then, if he does not want us unlearned, I do not want you to be ignorant, then he's saying I want you to be learned. To be learned, you have to be what? Taught. So I just proved to you that spiritual gifts can be taught after they're caught. For years, Brother Stone King says gifts are not taught, they're caught. I agree with that. But I agree that after they're caught, there has to be instruction for us to learn. Because Paul said, don't be unlearned. Don't be ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. Then verse 11, but all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing every man severally as he will. Talking about all the different manifestations of the gifts of the spirit, that they all work together to the glory of the Lord. Now, in intercession, we can find that in the business world, how many of you work outside the church in the business world raise your hand business in, in the business world they have something called the Pareto principle do you know what that is here 
the Pareto principle, that's where 20% do 80% of the work. In most sales forces, in most businesses, in most communities, 20% of the employees do 80% of the work and 80% do 20%. It's the same way in churches. Isn't it amazing? 20% of the people do the majority of the work and the rest just come and walk in on Sunday and go, oh, isn't this neat? That music sounds real good. These people have worked hours practicing that song and you're like, oh, the sound's too loud. If you'd worked 10 hours on that song, you wouldn't care. You'd just be glad to get it over with. And so... 20% do 80% of the work. It is the same in prayer. If you, we gave a statistic and I wrote this, I think I did this initial notes about eight years ago, 10 years ago. And at that time there was a, a poll that came out, not just in Pentecostalism, but in North America, Christianity across the board, when they asked people by survey on different forms of spiritual life, they did a survey, it was about 10 years ago, how many believe in a literal heaven or a literal hell? It was amazing that over 60% of the denominational preachers in North America no longer believed in a literal hell. So if your pulpits don't preach a literal hell that takes out conviction, no wonder people can live any way they want to and then come to church and think they're saved. Hello. But in that, wake up, wake up, everybody, wake up. In that statistic, they asked the question and they broke it down, all churches, all denominations across the board, that 5% 5% had a consistent daily routine prayer life. And then people wonder why we're not seeing the revival of the book of Acts. The Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why aren't we seeing it now? Has God's words changed? No, but the church has. And everyone's wanting to preach since the movie come out, The Passion of the Christ. I think somebody needs to preach, where did the passion of the church go? You can have the passion of the Christ. We need the passion of the church. The church has to be willing to yoke herself with the fervency and the discipline and the desire. Oh, Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost already. Hallelujah. So 5%. The gift of intercession is the ability that God gives to certain members of the body of Christ. Now, it's not to everybody. Again, you got to understand, not all people are intercessors, but all people can intercede. But the gift of intercession as a personality is given to certain people to pray for extended periods of time on a regular basis and they see frequent and specific answers to their prayer to a degree much greater than that which is expected of the average Christian. Many of us that have daily prayer lives, we pray the scripture, we pray the will of God, we cover our family, we pray that our steps are ordered of the Lord. We can do that on 30 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. That's great. We go, God moves. But an intercessor can get in the move of prayer and in three hours they're just getting started and that is a gift that if you have it I'm going to teach you if you don't have it don't be condemned about it because I guarantee you if you don't have that gift you have another gift of the spirit that an intercessor does not have Amen. this is where I'm going to try to help intercessors we must be very careful not to judge people that don't have the gift of intercession because those who are called to lead the church normally must be gifted more with administration and teaching than they are intercession and if an intercessor ever gets confused and thinks that the pastor is carnal because God uses him more to do the practical business side of the church while they're back here praying, they can begin to cause confusion in a church not understanding that if the pastor stayed on that level of the spirit, he would be so drained and emotional and tired and fried in his spirit that when he walked out here, he wouldn't even have a word from the Lord. So for me, when I pastored and trained my intercessors, 
I taught them that even though I pray and I do intercede and there were times I would lock in the church two or three days and I give myself over to the prayer of the spirit. There are also times where I have to get into the leadership and the apostle mode and teach and develop and study and read and train and invest and have staff meetings and board meetings and vision meetings. And, and at that point, that's when they need to be in the prayer room fighting and warring and helping carry that load. And instead of it lifting them up, it lifts the whole body up because 